Oi, boys, welcome back, welcome back. It is a rep round, State of Origin Game 2 will be the headliner this week. And the squads are in. First up, we have the New South Wales Blues. And it looks like all the chats around all the changes seem to be true. Let's go through it. So like last time, it's in alphabetical order, starting off with Matt Burton, a potential debutante, followed by Nathan Cleary, Damien Cook, Angus Crichton, Stephen Crichton, Clint Gutherson, Payne Haas, Nico Hines, Api Saikoroisau, Jerome Luai, Liam Martin, Jordan McLean, Cameron Murray, Junior Paolo, Victor Radley, Joseph Suali'i, Silsifa Dalakai, James Tedesco, Brian To'o, Jake Chaboyevich, Daniel Dubo, and Isaiah Yo. Alright, so first and foremost, let's clap it up for the new names. The players that dropped out of the squad, the biggest, Jack Whiten due to COVID. I got Donnie Staggs, a little unfair in my opinion, but I could see the logic, we'll get to that. Tarek Sims, a lot of people saw that coming. Regan Campbell-Gillard and his Eels teammate, Ryan Madison. I'll actually give my overall thoughts. I'm not too sure what the public think or the Blues supporters in general, but squad wise, it's a better looking squad in my opinion. Depending on how they line up, of course. Now let's get to the Godoni Staggs axing for Matt Burton, who's rumored to be partnered in the centers with uh, Steve Crichton. That Penrith Panthers connection once again shines through for the for the Blues in this match, but uh, even brighter than in the first. So do I agree with the axing of Godoni Staggs? No, but the Broncos supporter in me is low-key happy about it. Staggs is one of those players that are genuine game breakers. And based off his performance in game one, I, th I feel like he's a little hard done by as he didn't get much good ball and the man picked up an injury early and couldn't finish the match. So yeah, I feel like he's a little hard done by, but I could definitely see the logic in selecting Matt Burton, who could be used as a kick option as Cleary was absolutely hounded in game one. It was pretty much their sole general play kicking option. You could say why didn't Whiten step in, but maybe with Burton in there, uh, Burton would feel more comfortable taking the reins at certain moments. We'll just have to wait to find out. But like I said, I could see why they've selected Burton. And Critter, with White and out, it's a no-brainer. Much like what Donnie Staggs, Critter is a moments player, is a game-breaking type of player. I'm pretty interested to see how the pair go, playing out the full 80. Back to the new names, Victor Radley's a bit of a surprise selection, Jordan McLean another. I thought Campbell Gillard was pretty decent for the Blues, but the inform McLean gets a shot, or maybe he's just being brought into camp. Also, Gutherson's been brought into camp. There's rumors floating around that Uppy's going to be the 14, which, uh, as a Queenslander, makes me pretty worried. Having both Uppy and Dalakai, for instance, on the bench for the Blues, that's instantly more worrying than their previous bench for Game 1, which, as I predicted, were a little lackluster and were outshined by the Maroons bench. Lastly, Jake Chaboyevic and Angus Crichton make their way back into the squad. Now, it's looking like Crichton might start the match, possibly. I'm not too sure how they'll line up. Surely, Jake Chaboyevic will be in there somewhere, most likely to help tighten up their middle D, which looked a little vulnerable in Game 1. It's funny because I agreed with them not picking Jake pre-Origin 1 and then after the match couldn't help but think maybe he would have made a difference or more so questioning could he have stopped a rampaging Paddy Carrigan for instance because the game was tight don't get it twisted happy that Queensland got the win but it was definitely there for the taking for the Blues that's all I've got for the uh, callbacks if you will Gutherson won't be getting a run but he's been brought into camp Crichton and Jerbo, on the other hand, have me a little too worried, especially Jerbo as he's back to his ball playing best. Okay, maybe not his best, but he's definitely been carving these past couple of weeks. As far as omissions go, once again, Josh Adokar misses out, which is a shame, but like I said in the game one review, both To'o and Dubo had really good games. Although I will say this, there were moments in game one where Dubo did find himself in a bit of open space, and I can't help but think maybe for those instances, Having an elite finisher like the Fox would have definitely been more beneficial as there's a there's a part in the game where I swear Dubo was in open space. And if he had someone as agile as the Fox is and as fast as he is, maybe he could have scored points off something like that. I obviously can't show the moment I'm talking about, but that'll wrap up this little uh, squad reveal of the New South Wales Blues for game two. Hopefully this afternoon, the Queenslanders reveal their lineup for now. If you enjoyed that and would like to see more rugby league related content or more content in general, be sure to run and share that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you later.